That means you're talking around like a student when he's done some legwork. It usually goes straight to translate to your grades. Typically, just like laying that out as the foundation here. So, a couple of takeaways from the few things that I've reviewed, just in general, that will apply to all of you. So, when you're writing your thesis, and I know some of you have talked to me about how do I, I don't, do I have to make a really solid claim one way or the other? Like, the question is about author's responsibility. So, your guiding principle in every one of your paragraphs should be, did the author handle history accurately and does that matter to you as a reader? Do you think the author has that responsibility? So, it's important that you talk about how each author handles each historical context. That's important. <laughs> if you just talk about how they handle the historical context and you never get to like a judgment of whether that's okay or not, then you're missing that component. The most, to me, the most significant component. So if you say, here's how Richard III is painted in Shakespeare's perspective, which is different from the historical narrative about Richard III, the end, you have to somehow judge that. That's who your thesis is. So you might say, and because this is a fictional drama, it's fine. It's okay for Shakespeare to do this. It's up to the audience, the reader, to then say, Richard III is not Richard III. Or Julius Caesar is not Julius Caesar. Or Paul in All Quiet on the Western Front is not every soldier ever. Or whatever, however you choose to interpret that. Or you might say, like Shakespeare defames the real Richard III because the characters are so close, like the context is so close to reality that it's hard to distinguish between the two. That's sort of the two camps. Right? Because you have to make a judgment about whether the author is responsible, or not irresponsible, or is writing fiction so it doesn't happen. That make sense? So evidence would just be like general comments about the context of each work and how the author fits his narrative <laughs> into that context and whether it is kind of true historically. So that's not quotes, that's more big picture character type stuff for the most part because you're talking about the characters. I don't even really have specific examples from the book. Yeah, and I'm fine with that. Like the, the big message here is like big picture, thematic, do authors have a responsibility to record history? And you're going to use those sort of examples, the ideas of those texts. Yeah, sure. You can group them by like strategic. So, Richard III is, and I, somebody asked about that yesterday. Historical fiction, it can be historical fiction. Yeah. So, like, Things Fall Apart, I would label as realistic fiction. Even though colonialism was a, a policy, whatever, World War II, World War I is an event. World, the War of the Roses is an event. So yeah, you could label it as historical fiction. Um, but that one's the murky one because you have characters that are also like, real. So historical fiction, typically you have main characters and stories. Are made up and you know projected on the actual. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought, I thought it was a I think there's both like approaches over there. Yeah. So that's just general commentary. Those of you that are giving me stuff, I'll speak to you from the individual too. So let's listen to Ben and I'll see. Well, I'm almost dying. 